I have chosen to do this by graphic because I think graphic is awesome. I will show you this way, and then I'll show you how you could do it if you didn't like graphing, which I take it as a lot of you, okay? Um, 1 over 2x minus 1. That's this hyperbola here, okay? That's what it looks like. I want to know where is the hyperbola below, below 2. That's what it means, or, or equal to, right? So what I do is I just graph the hyperbola. I put in my 2 line. See, there it is. There's 2. And I want everything below it or touching. So you could just barely, barely make out. You see how I've highlighted this part? Why have I highlighted this? It's below 2. What about this part here? Also below 2. So those are the parts I want. And therefore, I've got to work out the x and a's that correspond with that. Now, even if you don't like graphing, you should be able to look at this guy over here and pretty quickly tell me what the vertical asymptote is. Do you see where I got this from? Where did I get this from? 2x minus 1. Yeah, this is the value that makes the denominator zero, which breaks my function. That's what gives me a vertical asymptote, okay? So therefore, to the left of that, that's all good. That's all underneath two. And then I need to work out this point of intersection, which is exactly what I did over there on the right-hand side, okay? Once I know where everything's happening, I plus my answer, okay? Now, I understand, you may be not comfortable with graphing hyperbolas that much, to which I would say two things. Number one, I've got another way to do it. Number two, you better get more comfortable with graphing them because they're not that bad. They're really not that bad. Here's how you would do it if you didn't want to use hyperbolas. Okay? Now, have a look. You've got to note a few things. And you can see, by the way, why I like graphing. Because this way is fine. It's just long as. Okay? And there's lots of places to just numerically stuff yourself up, which, in fact, I did the first time I solved this. Okay? First thing, let's start up here. I've written this down. And immediately I notice there is a domain restriction. Okay? I say that now because I don't have a graph that tells me that's the case. So therefore, I'd better notice it to begin with. Okay? Now, this next line here, I've done something a little bit weird. Can you see I've multiplied both sides by 2x minus 1 squared? Now, I know looking at this, it's not obvious that you should multiply by 2x minus 1 squared. It's more obvious to multiply just by 2x minus 1. Can someone tell me why I can't do that? Because, um, yeah, no. Because uh, of the, the name. No, you don't know. So uh, there is this restriction issue. So that's a bit of a problem. But there's actually something else which is a bigger issue. Declan, you have your hand up. Oh, okay. Um, because you don't know whether the denominator is negative or positive. Okay. Yeah, Very good. So see this line here? This line here? I multiplied through by 2x minus 1. And that inequality sign is still facing the same direction because why would I change it? And the answer is, well, what, why do I change the direction of the denominator? In what circumstances? When the denominator, or when whatever I multiply by is negative. If you multiply both sides of something like this, 3 is less than 4. You multiply by negative 1. Negative 3 is not less than negative 4. Negative 3 is greater than negative 4. So negative numbers switch the direction of the inequality. <coughs> and here's the dangerous thing about 2x minus 1. You don't know whether it's positive or negative. The whole point of having pronumerals is that they can change, they can vary. So sometimes he's positive, sometimes he's negative. So what you could do if you wanted was, you could say this, but you would have to say there's a case, right? Or case 1. When 2x minus 1 is positive, that's what you get. And then there's another case where 2x minus 1 isn't positive, and then you get the other side. But I'm going to do everything I possibly can to avoid, avoid cases because they're messy. Instead, my solution is I multiply by the square. Why is that a better option? Because the square, we noticed this before, squares are positive when you're dealing with real numbers anyway. So I can leave my inequality sign facing the direction he's doing, and he's not going to change. Once you've done that, you get some simplifying, you get a quadratic on the right hand side. Once you tidy that up, you factorize. And then you get to this point here. Now please note, you get to this quadratic and you factorized it. And I think to myself, okay, I know what this looks like. There are two roots. Can you tell me what the roots are? From this, you get a half. And from this, you get three quarters. Do you agree? 
So I'm just going to go, let's put a half there and three quarters there. So this is a really awful parabola that shows you what it looks like. Okay? Now, year 11. This line here that I've highlighted in pink says, tell me which parts of that parabola are above or equal to zero, right? So in other words, that's, uh, let's get, choose another color. That's this part over here, that part's good. And this part over here, that part is also good. So that's exactly what I've written here, to the left of half and to the right of three quarters, except Remember, the very first line, I noticed there was a domain restriction. Do you remember that? And that domain restriction directly interacts with this inequality. Do you see it? So I was like, oh yeah, x, is can, x can be less than or equal to a half, except I've got to take out that boundary. So that's why there's this subtle change, which students often miss when they solve it through this method. This method is fine. It works quite nicely, actually. But you've got to um, eliminate this. Now, I didn't worry about this when I solved it the first time. Can anyone remember why I didn't even have to worry about this? Because, come back. Whoop. There we go. Because look, what is x equals a half? It's an asymptote. You, you can't touch it, right? My picture tells me I can't touch it, right? So x has to be less than a half, as I've written over here, because you don't get to the boundary. Whereas x is greater than or equal to 3 quarters, because look, at that point, you do get the boundary. Does that make sense? So whichever you choose, I I'm quite happy if you did either way, but your answer, there's quite a lot of nuance in there. So I'd expect that to be worth like three marks. Uh, a couple of marks for those boundaries and getting the directions of the inequalities, and then there's a whole mark on whether you understand that boundary value is not included. Okay, question. Uh, yeah, you're right. So, so four marks. So let's just quickly plot that, shall we? Uh, what's the most important number on another line? Zero. Zero, so I'm going to chuck that in. Uh, it is important you have a decent scale, so if I put one there, half is exactly halfway, there's three quarters. And now that means I've got a hollow, let's choose a different colour. I've got a hollow circle there, yep, to the left, and then I've got a filled circle here, whoops, wrong spot, there, to the right. Are you happy? That's a better solution. OCD, so like the big double circle Yeah, it's just because, anyway, whatever. Quick question, yeah. So like, how come you have uh, a hyperbola in this picture and you have a parabola in the That's a great question. Why is it that I have a hyperbola here, when I'm solving here, and then when I solved it the other way, the alternative method, I had a parabola, not this shape. Do you remember this morning we were looking at solving tree equations, but some of them were quadratics in disguise. Remember that? Okay. But they are connected problems, right? Solving one is the instrument for solving the other. When you're solving this, uh, sorry. When you're solving this, you get two regions, which is exactly the same as if you were solving a quadratic. You'll get two regions. So that's why they actually end up being equivalent problems if you multiply two by a square of 2x minus 1. 